Hello, I'm Julia Griffith and today we're going to be talking about diamond formation and exploring this common myth that diamonds are made out of coal and we're going to find out whether this is at all a possibility. So in this session, we're going to look into diamonds versus coal for origin and age. And to finish off, we're going to explore all the reasons why this myth may have come into existence. So to start off, let's just clarify what this myth and misconception is. So the idea is that we start off with coal and then with added heat and pressure, this forms diamond. So in other words, diamond is metamorphosized coal. If we have a look at what diamond is, uh, it is a crystalline material, so it is a mineral made out of pure carbon, or pretty much pure carbon. There can be some impurity atoms in there, such as nitrogen, but we're talking really low quantities, maybe one or two parts per million atoms. Otherwise, all of the atoms are in very, very strong covalent bonds. And it's this crystal structure that gives diamonds some of its most impressive properties, such as its hardness, its unparalleled luster, and also its thermal conductivity and its transparency and its beauty in effect as well. So for all of these reasons, it has become the most popular gemstone in the world. Also, thanks to a bit of marketing by De Beers. And also, it's extremely important in many industrial applications as well. So if we compare this to coal, coal is not a mineral. It's classed as a mineraloid because it's not a crystalline material. It is amorphous. It has organic origin. It's now used as a non-renewable fossil fuel. And its organic origin is derived from prehistoric plants. Now, the material largely consists of carbon atoms. However, um, there's a different amount of carbon depending on what type of coal we're talking about. So some can be quite low in coal contents, so around 25%, and then the rest all impurity atoms. And then some of the finer coals go up to 97% carbon purity. And what affects the uh, purity of coal is all to do with how it was fossilized, at what depths, what temperatures and what pressures. So if we have a look at the similarities of coal and diamond, uh, the first thing is that they are largely made up of the same element. So that's carbon. Also, both do require heat and pressure to grow or to form. So let's have a look in a bit more detail at where they grow. And from this, hopefully we'll see whether diamonds could possibly come from coal. We're going to start with diamonds. So diamonds have two main origins, both of which are deep within the mantle of our Earth, so below the Earth's crust. The main origin is in the upper mantle, so in an area known as the lithosphere, which is just here. So this is below the Earth's crust, in the upper mantle, but still where the upper mantle is rigid. So this is solid peridotite rock. And we're talking an average of 150 kilometers in depth below the crust, we get this stability zone for diamonds. And this is where the majority of diamonds form. There is another very important origin, which a lot of research has gone into in the last decade. And this is um, sub-lithospheric diamond, so much deeper within the transition zone of the mantle. So here we're talking depths of 410 to 660 kilometers down. And even though not many diamonds come from this origin, it's become a very important source because we have learned that this is where the biggest and best diamonds come from. Now, for diamonds to get to us for use in jewellery or in industry, uh, we can't dig down to them. We rely on very violent uh, volcanic eruptions for the uh, magma to capture the diamonds on its way through and push them up into the Earth's crust so they can be collected and mined. If they do happen 
within or below a store of diamonds for the lithosphere you can see that it pushes through the diamonds and captures them on the way up for the super deep diamonds we are relying on convection of the mantle to bring them to a level where the magma which is kimberlite magma forms which is around 150 to 400 kilometers down and from there they can get captured and brought up to the surface so either way very rare events if we compare this to the formation of coal, as I mentioned, coals uh, form from prehistoric plants. So this is a very long time ago. We had some of the first plants that ever grew on this earth. And due to many floods, um, a lot of this tree and woodland ended up being on the bottom underneath sediments and water. And here it began to decay and turn into something known as peat. Peat is still commonly used on composts and in gardening today. As more layers of sediments fall on top of this peat, it begins to fossilize. And that's with the increase in temperature and also the increase of pressure from the sediments above it. And eventually this forms seams of coal. Some of these coal seams can be huge, covering 150 kilometers in length, and these get mined by underground mining processes most often, and that's how we get our coal. And we do have some coal within jewelry, so a type of coal that we know is jet. So jet is formed by very similar processes. These coal seams form within the Earth's crusts at relatively shallow depths. So we're talking a maximum of three kilometers deep below the surface. Compare that to the average depth of most diamond formation, which is 150 kilometers below the surface. We can see that coal seams are nowhere near diamonds. So diamonds can't form from coal because geologically they're very distant. So from looking at the origin only, we can see that one material has nothing to do with the other. Another thing that we can look at, which proves that diamonds can't come from coal, is the age of these two materials. If we look at this very simple timeline, we have the formation of Earth here, which is approximately 4.5 billion years ago. Diamonds are really old materials as well, the oldest being dated back to 3.5 billion years ago, and the youngest ones being dated just under a billion years old. This is much older than coal. Coal is thought to be averagely 300 million years old, so much, much younger. Uh, so this is when the very first trees evolved with bark, and due to the fact that the bark couldn't be broken down, this is what became fossilized. So there was only a really small time period, a well, geologically small time period, that coal formed, and that's predicted to be in between 280 or 90 to 360 million years ago. So that means that today, any coal or any diamonds that you do mine, again, have no association to one another because they both formed at very different time periods. So in summary, diamonds cannot come from coal because they have very different origins in the earth, coal being from relatively shallow depths of about three kilometers for the deepest coal seams and diamonds average around 150 kilometers down and some much, much deeper as well. They're also created in different time periods. So coal being averagely about 300 million years ago and diamonds being a billion to 3.5 billion years old. The majority are thought to be over 3 billion. So in summary, diamonds do not come from coal, but we will revisit this idea as we look deeper into some origins of diamonds later. So coming to the end of this lecture now, we're going to hypothesize why this myth might exist. So how did this myth come about in the first place? 
One possible origin for this myth might be from Antoine Lavoisier's work. So Antoine Lavoisier was a famous French scientist and he's noted for discovering a number of the common elements including carbon, oxygen and hydrogen. So in one of his experiments in 1772, he famously burnt a diamond with a magnifying lens and the sun's rays and analysed the gases that came off of it and realised that the gases that came off of it were the same as the gases from burnt charcoal, thus concluding that charcoal and diamond are made of the same thing which in his conclusions was CO2. Now, even though his conclusion is slightly wrong because diamonds are not made of CO2, they are just made from carbon, these findings still might have got into the public knowledge and people might have thought that because they're made from the same thing, that diamonds are just a purer form of charcoal. Now, this experiment is particularly impressive when you learn that he concluded that these two materials were made from the same elements before discovering these elements because oxygen wasn't isolated and named until 1778 and then carbon not until 1789 which he called carbon from the word charcoal. Now there is an important distinction to be made here that coal is not charcoal. It's not the same thing. Uh, in the gem world, it's likened to someone saying that zircon is cubic zirconia. It's not the case just because they have a similar part of the word. It doesn't mean that they're the same material. There are some similarities to these two materials. For example, they are both organic. They do both mainly consist of carbon. However, coal is from fossilized plants and is non-renewable, where it was only made during that small era many moons ago uh, once it's used up no more will be produced however charcoal we could make some this week if we wanted to so this is burnt wood and is a renewable source of energy another one of my hypotheses for why this myth may have come about is to do with superman Superman famously started crushing coal into diamonds using his hands in 1947 and he's been doing it ever since within cartoons, comics and also films. Now this date is very interesting for anyone who attended my other webinar, A Diamond Is Forever, uh, you'll know that this date is also the year that De Beers released their advertising slogan, A Diamond Is Forever and that was about eight or nine years into their marketing campaign. So I have tried to find out whether De Beers has any influence on this ability of Superman's. However, again, unfortunately, my research reached a dead end. Um, but if you do happen to know if the two are related, I'd be very interested to hear from you. But I'm not saying Superman's all to blame. However, he has certainly perpetuated this idea within the minds of generations of people. And he has done it a lot. So it's not a one-off thing. You can see him here in the 1978 film and all throughout um, comic books and even modern cartoons making these huge diamond crystals. And he also put into the heads of everyone that he can do this because of the combination of heat and pressure onto coal. Further perpetuating this idea are the many inspirational quotes out there that make this reference to diamonds coming from coal, uh, such as this one by Malcolm Forbes, the owner of Forbes magazine, stating diamonds are nothing more than chunks of coal that stuck to their jobs. Or from famous preacher Rick Warren saying God changes coal into diamonds using time and pressure. And there are many, many other versions of this all over social media today. So this misconception will likely be kept alive for a long time to come. So in conclusion, are diamonds made out of coal? The answer is no. They form at different depths, they formed across different eras, it's not possible for one to come from the other, apart from that one question mark that I have over meteorite diamonds. I have one more hypothetical question for you before we end this webinar, which is, could we make diamond from coal artificially? 
So can we make a synthetic diamond using coal as the carbon source? And the answer is yes, because we can start off with coal and convert this into graphite using a process known as graphitization. This is already used by some companies to make coal, which is otherwise known for releasing a high amount of greenhouse gases upon burning, uh, purifies it to create a cleaner energy source. And we can use graphite or graphite powder within HPHT diamond synthesis. So the graphite powder is the source of carbon which gets dissolved into the metallic flux and then the carbon recrystallizes as diamond at the bottom of the reaction cell. So we can use coal as a carbon source for diamonds. We can use a lot of things that contain carbon as a carbon source for diamonds, but we don't because this process is lengthy and expensive. But hypothetically, could be done. That's it from me. Thank you so much for joining in on this webinar. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you for another one. Take care.